Hi you guys, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. Believe it or not, this week we are working on this piece that's behind me and I'm showing it to you in its scary phase because a lot of you guys think that I'm crazy uh, when I take on projects like this, but this one I think is going to come out pretty cool. So this is actually an upholstery project. This is a chair that we're going to transform using paint and I'm even going to try a little bit of decoupage on it. Let's see how that goes. I've never done that technique before, um, but I hear that it works great. And so even though this chair looks really bad and um, it is really well made, it's a very high quality piece and I picked it up for free. So I figured this was a perfect chance for me to experiment with, met with you guys and show you some techniques on how to paint on fabric. And um, I've done this before and it actually turns out pretty good. So trust me, stick around and let's get started. Here's where I started on this chair. Overall, it's in really good condition. It just has some sun bleaching on the fabric, but the overall make of it is really good quality. And so we're gonna give this one a makeover. The first thing that I wanted to do on this is make sure that I gave this chair a really good cleaning. So I went over this one with my Bissell steam cleaner and I cleaned it until the water ran clear. Overall, this one wasn't too bad. I also saw that it came from a really clean and high-end home and that made me feel much better in redoing this piece of fabric furniture too. The first thing that I want to do is make sure that I cover up some of this pattern in the fabric and that's going to help me get an overall vision for how this chair is going to look when it's redone. So I started out with this dark charcoal gray paint and when I'm using a chalk paint to refinish fabric, I'm actually turning the paint into a fabric dye. So I'm using a lot of water. I've mixed into my water bottle just a cap full of downy fabric softener and that's going to keep my fabric nice and soft while I add this paint to it. I saturate the fabric fully and I'm brushing it in with a synthetic bristle brush so that I can work that paint into the fabric like a dye. All right, once my first coat of paint is dry, I can see that I don't have perfect coverage. I can still see some of my fabric through the paint, um, but I'm gonna come back with a sanding block. I did use my power sander on this, but for camera, I'm gonna show you with a sanding block. And I just sanded the entire piece. And right away, even just with this little bit of sanding, I can already feel a difference. It starts getting much softer. I used a 120 grit and my power sander and I just sand it over the entirety of the chair. Okay, and that gave me this surface. So I, I have some areas in my fabric where it's sanded a little heavier than others. That's okay because this next coat of paint is gonna fix that. So the colors that I'm using on this are Wiesel paint and I'm using Earth, which is a deep brown. I'm using iron oxide, which is a reddish brown, and then a little bit of Dijon, which is a honey mustard yellow. And then of course the black. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start with my earth, which is this brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of water and the paint that I put underneath has helped to sort of close off the pores of this fabric. So it doesn't take as much work or paint on the second coat as it did on the first. Painting fabric takes a lot of arm work and it also takes more paint than it would just to paint a hard surface. So let me give myself some of this um, earth kind of in the center. My goal here is that it looks like a, sort of like a worn leather and it doesn't need to be even because I'm gonna mix in some other colors. I'm gonna take another brush and this is iron oxide, which sort of has some red tones in it. I'm gonna add a little bit of water for that. And I'm just gonna kind of choose a few spots. And then when I add the Dijon, I'm just gonna do the very tips of my bristles and barely any paint. This overpowers quite easily. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of that Dijon. And then a little bit more of that iron oxide. I'm using the same brush for the iron oxide and the Dijon. Okay, and once I've got some spots of that, I'm gonna come back with my brush for the earth. I did not add any paint to it, um, but I like this big fat brush and kind of work in some of those spots of different colors.
And then once I kind of like the center, which I feel like I want a little bit more of this iron oxide kind of here and maybe some here. And I'm gonna work those in again. All right, and once I feel like I like that variation, now I'm gonna come and do these edges with the black. So I'm gonna add a little water around the edge. This is my water that's mixed with fabric softener. And I'm just gonna add this shading around the edge. So you absolutely can blend on fabric. And in this case, I'm giving it the look of a worn leather. Once I've got some black around the edges, I'm gonna come soften that out with my brush for my earth, which is the brown. And I'm just gonna blend this in. These big round brushes from Wise Owl are really nice blending brushes. And they're also great for fabric because it's got a really nice full head of bristles and they're nice and firm. All right, and once I feel like I like how this looks, go over it one more time. I will let this dry and we'll come back and do the next step. Here's where I landed on my chair with my faux leather finish around all the sides. I did also add a base coat of white to the back and this is going to be because I'm going to add a paper over the top. White paint under decoupage paper gives you the most clean, crisp colors of the paper and I wanna make sure these really pop. So that's just gonna be my base coat. You're not gonna end up seeing any of that white paint when I'm done. I'm using this paper from Mint by Michelle and I love her papers because they're really nice and durable. So it's gonna be absolutely great for this application. I also love the size of it for the back of this chair and I chose it for the colors. I like the placement of the um, person that's on the paper. It looks really good on the chair and the colors complement the faux leather finish that I did on the body. So I started out by applying some Fabric Mod Podge. I'm using that as my adhesive on this. And I chose Fabric Mod Podge because I know that it's friendly to fabric and it keeps its um, flex with it. So I know that it will move with the back of this chair with the fabric so that it can be used still. I covered the top of my chair in a towel and that's just so that I can um, fold the paper up while I'm working on it so that I don't get any adhesive onto the front of the paper. I'm trying to keep that nice and clean. I applied my fabric Mod Podge with a little bit of water um, because mine was pretty thick. I've had it in my cabinet for a while. I just wanted to thin it out a little bit and I applied it over the areas where I had any of that white paint and then I'm going to apply my fabric. Two hands or my paper, two hands really helped for this because I was able to have that second set of hands just hold the paper up so that I could apply it gradually instead of letting it all go down and having to try to smooth it out. Once I had an idea where my paper would end, I went ahead and came back and cut away the excess, but I do want to leave some because I'm going to hide the edge of this paper into the seams of this chair, and that means they won't get worn over time. So with my second set of hands holding that paper up, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of water and then a little bit of my fabric Mod Podge. Again, it's fairly thick Mod Podge because this isn't a new container. I would recommend grabbing a new one if you have the ability, but this is what I had on hand. I'm smoothing it over the top of my painted fabric, just using a putty knife, and then I'm gonna brush it out to a smooth finish so that I don't have any areas that are extra thick. I don't know what I would have done without that second set of hands. It really helped because I think I would have had a much worse application if I would have had to do this on my own. So anytime you have the chance to ask for help, don't be afraid to do that. Now that I've brushed my Mod Podge out nice and smooth, I went ahead and dampened my paper just a little bit because that's gonna give a little bit of stretch to the paper itself too. Then I'm just gonna use this decoupage tool and I started in the center of my paper and I'm gonna work my way outward. And I'm also going to work my way down and as I go down, I'm going to sandwich the edges of those paper into the seams of my chair by just pushing it in with that decoupage tool. Again, the durability of this paper really, really helped with this application because I asked a lot from this paper. I just worked one side at a time and I went ahead and pressed those edges into the seams of my chair. The Mod Podge does dry clear. I went ahead and wiped away any excess that I could, but if I have little areas that have it, it's gonna dry clear. I also accounted for the fact that I'm gonna need to touch up the seat of this chair when I'm done applying this to the back. Um, so I just accounted for that knowing that I'm gonna need to do that when I'm done. The paper actually laid remarkably smooth. I was really, really impressed. The pattern that you're seeing in the paper is the pattern in the fabric of the chair. So other than that, this laid really smooth and I really didn't have any wrinkles in it. 
Before I started this process, I made sure to get out any tools that I thought I might need. So I did get out a brayer. I had this decoupage tool. I've had a pair of scissors, my mister bottle, and my brush, and my Mod Podge, of course. Um, any areas that I needed to apply extra Mod Podge, I just waited till the very end. So you can see here, I didn't lay those very edges because I want to make sure those get nice and smooth. And so I'm going to do those last. I came back and brushed a little bit of my Mod Podge onto the back of the paper to make sure I get nice contact and also onto the chair itself. Itself. And then again, using my decoupage tool, I'm going to force those edges into the seams of my chair. With the edges going into the seams of the chair, the only areas that I'm going to need to camouflage a CB to the fabric and the paper is up around this top edge. So it's going to be much easier to do the less areas that I have to camouflage. Once I had all the bottom edges of the um, paper all applied, and this actually ended up being the easiest portion was doing the bottom, I wanted to come up and pay attention to the top. So I hadn't applied the very edges of the top of the paper. I did decide that I'm going to do a torn edge, and I think this is going to be easier to camouflage versus having a straight cut factory edge along all the edges of the paper. So I just added a little bit of moisture to the edge of the paper, and using my fingers, I just went ahead and tore an uneven edge around the top portion of the paper. This torn edge ended up blending into some of the irregularities in the pattern fabric of this chair, and that way it was harder to spot where the paper ended and my fabric began. So now with my edges all torn, I need to go ahead and seat those onto the fabric. So this is where I came back and I'm gonna apply a little bit of that Mod Podge to the very edges. I hadn't done that up until this point. I let the very edges be unattached. Um, but now I've got them decided where I want them to be. I'm going to add a little bit of that fabric Mod Podge around the edge of my paper, and I'm going to seat that. I want to make sure these edges especially are nice and attached because this is going to be the most likely points of wear um, where the fabric and the paper might separate over time. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to make sure these are nice and really well attached. I applied a little bit of my fabric Mod Podge underneath my paper and onto the back of my paper as well, and then using my decoupage tool, I just smoothed those out until they're perfectly smooth. And again, you can look around the paper and see any irregularities in the paper itself. This is because there's a pattern fabric underneath, so it's going to have a little bit of bumps and movement where that fabric has a pattern. Had this chair been a perfectly smooth fabric, I think it would have been ideal, but this was a great one to experiment on. I learned a lot from the process, but if I had to make a recommendation, I would say if you're starting out with this process, choose a smooth fabric. A smooth duck cloth or a canvas would be ideal for this application. And now that my paper is perfectly laid and I really love the application, I'm going to go ahead and apply a layer of my fabric Mod Podge over top. Again, I'm going to use this to seal the paper because I know that it keeps its movement um, even once it's dry. It's not going to dry too hard and there's not going to be a risk of cracking. Um, I did apply this over the top and even though this is a matte Mod Podge, it does still have a gloss to it and I didn't really like that. So I ended up applying a matte sealer over the top of my Mod Podge. I don't want any shine to this application because the shine only emphasized the pattern fabric that was underneath. I don't want to bring that out. I actually want to make it look like one matte sealer over the top that doesn't catch the light with the movement of that fabric. With that sealer over top, this application is done. I went ahead and let this dry overnight and then I'm going to come back and take a look at it. I wiped up any excess Mod Podge from just around the edges of my seat. Again, I know I'm going to have to give that a paint. Um, and here is where I landed. I'm thrilled with the outcome on this, you guys. This is going to be a beautiful chair when I'm done. So now with my paper nice and dry, I need to go ahead and paint around these edges. And I was seeing a lot of almost a military green in the background of this paper. So I started out with a color called Foxtrot. And this had a little too much green in it. So I ended up changing this to military bronze, which was a closer match to the background of this paper. I'm going to start by giving just kind of a solid base coat to this and then I'm going to come in and sort of brush in some other colors to it. So for the solid base color I did paint slightly onto the edge of the paper and that's because I want to camouflage where the edge of that paper is. If I were to paint just up to the edge of it it's going to really emphasize where the edge is. So by going over slightly onto the top of the paper I'm going to camouflage the edges and sort of um, camouflage these colors into each other but I made sure to not paint onto the actual figure herself. 
All right, now I'm gonna start building up some of those colors and feathering them in even more to the backgrounds of this paper. So I came back with a little bit of that military bronze and it's pretty close, but I'm gonna use a um, rag just to smudge out around the figure because I don't wanna obscure her at all. And I am gonna blend the colors a little bit better as I keep going. From this angle here, you can really see where the paper and the fabric meet up on this one edge, and it's pretty camouflaged in person. You can't really tell where it is. And the more that I built these paint colors up, the harder it got to see where that seam was. So let's go ahead and paint in around these edges. I'm gonna go ahead and turn some music on as I build up these colors, and you'll see how that line continues to disappear. In addition to the military bronze, I ended up using some Spanish olive and a little bit of vintage duck egg, and that kind of gave me this color combination. And then I used a little bit of black just to keep that area around her face a little bit darkened. I'm really happy with how this turned out. You can't see that seam at all in person. And then I went ahead and sealed over all of it using a matte clear coat. This chair is complete. I learned so much on this project, you guys. What did I learn? Painting fabric can be a lot of work. So my few recommendations that I would make on this one is try to avoid a textured fabric if you can. Uh, this was definitely complicated because it had this fabric or texture in it. I do love the result. It came out really pretty. Um, I love the color combination. Um, I also learned that the wax adds a lot. That's really where the difference came on this project. Decoupage on fabric is definitely possible. This has a lot of movement in it. It mimics the texture of the fabric, um, but it actually came out really cool. Um, add a lot to this chair. Um, I learned that two coats of paint is about where you want to be. If you get to three, you start getting the risk that you might limit the movement of the fabric. Um, had this been smooth, I think it would have looked like a leather chair when I was done. Just that fabric added, or that texture added a little bit of interest to it. But overall, it's a huge improvement. 
This chair is complete and it found a new home rapid fast after I posted it. She's a costume designer and love the artisticness in it. It's going to go well in her quirky home and I love that. So you guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. Don't forget to click that subscribe button.